Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and the original plan for today's video was that it was going to be a PCB breakdown of the Gigabyte X570 SA Aorus Master. However, while shooting that video, I got incredibly frustrated that the fact that I'm constantly refer referencing a motherboard that I've not really shown on this channel at all in video. I've had it for a while, it's showed up in a few live streams, but uh... I've not acknowledged on video that I own this motherboard and what I think of it. So that's what we're going to do today. Say hello to the incredibly disappointing motherboard that I reference as a bad example of memory overclocking uh, for, for AM4. The Asus B550 Strix XE. I bought this thing, um, and I guess we should do a full disclosure about this because... Uh, so, Gigabyte, because Asus doesn't send me motherboard samples, I can't imagine why that would be. I think the Maximus 12 Apex is an incredible motherboard. If this was more like the Maximus, you know, 12 Apex and less like, well, what it is, um, I wouldn't be making this video, but that's unfortunately not the case. But anyway, so Asus does not send me motherboard samples, um, and, you know, they're totally free to do that. ASRock also doesn't send me motherboard samples. Um... And they're also totally free to do that. MSI does, Gigabyte does, EVGA does. Um, and so basically anytime I'm covering an ASRock or an Asus motherboard, I have to buy it because I'm not getting free samples from those companies. Um, and uh, yeah, so the reason I bring that up is because obviously there's sort of like a, you're, you know, the potential for like you're ripping on Asus just because it's Asus doesn't send you samples. However, I'd like to let you in on a little secret. Uh, the top 10, like, number one method of making absolutely certain Asus never sends you anything is complaining about their products. That should clue you in on why I don't get sent Asus review samples. Anyway, um, yeah, so they don't send me samples, and, uh, complaining about this is not going to change that situation. In fact, it's probably going to make it worse, but... I don't care. I like they like it can't get worse. <laughs> it's not like they send me anything anyway. Um, so let's talk about why I find this motherboard so disappointing. And the thing is, like I have Asus motherboards, and before we get to this, I do have Asus motherboards that I like a lot. I have a Rampage Four Extreme. I love that thing. Um, I have a Maximus Twelve Apex. It's it's a great board. It's actually, as far as I'm concerned, the best Z490 motherboard ever made. Um, not that there's much competition in that, like, you know, category of Z490 motherboard, but still, it, it is. Um, then there's, like, uh, what else do I have? There's the Maximus 11 Gene, which... I don't like that board as much as I like the Maximus 12 Apex, but it's still a really, really solid board. And then there's the Maximus 9 Apex, which I really, really like. That's that's just a great board. And then I'm generally a pretty big fan of, like, Asus GPU PCB designs. And, uh, you know, like, yeah. So, like, there's quite a few Asus, like, I overall, I'd say my motherboard collection is primarily dominated by Gigabyte boards at this point. Partially because they're really cheap on eBay for some reason. <laughs> Partially because, well, Gigabyte just kind of likes to send me way too many boards. Um, like, seriously, I've told them sometimes that just to not send boards and shows up anyway. So, uh, and then, like, the board sh boards show up anyway, and it's just kind of like, oh, okay. And sometimes I request some, but, like, the, the, the alignment of what they want to send me and what I actually want to test is kind of out of whack. Um, but, uh... Anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of the thing. So, like, I don't fundamentally have a problem with Asus. I have a fundamental problem with this. Right here. This Asus motherboard. This homeopathic ROG motherboard. Um, which, the crazy thing is, the Strix GPUs are actually really nice. And then the Strix motherboards are just, like, totally under undeserving of this logo. Like, this board is actively harming that brand. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into why I even have this thing. So, um, I wanted a B550 motherboard with good memory overclocking and SLI support. There's not much choice when it comes to B550 motherboards with SLI support. The B550 Tai Chi from ASRock does not have SLI support, and that was one of the motherboards I was considering because 
it would give me an opportunity to test out uh, Azrock's latest six-layer daisy chain topology. Um, then another motherboard I was considering, well, actually, is just this. <laughs> Um, there's also the Strix B550e, which is like a cheaper version of this. Um, probably uses the exact same PCB, maybe a, di a different VRM as far as I know, but same PCB probably. Um, so yeah, the B550e exists, but uh, yeah, I didn't buy that because this was on sale, and I figured, and this is newer, so I was kind of hoping that this would have like a newer memory topology potentially, and therefore be better. At least that's how it works with, like, Gigabyte and ASRock and, you know, other motherboard vendors. Um, but no, with, with Asus, like, like if this is the latest and greatest memory topology that Asus is shipping on their top-end boards, oof. Just oof. Because this is so, so behind. Even, like, cheap ASRock boards. Um... Like, that's the worst part. It's like, we're not even going to be comparing this primarily against Gigabyte. We're going to be comparing this primarily against an ASRock motherboard that costs less and does more, except for the part where it doesn't have SLI because ASRock can't, like, the, the way SLI works is basically you need to pay NVIDIA like, uh, an SLI, like, uh, a fee so that NVIDIA whitelists your motherboard in the, like, drivers so that you can enable SLI. That's basically what they do. So, yeah, um... So having SLI support is actually like a, you know, thing that adds cost to a motherboard without actually fundamental. Like, you do need the PCIe switches, but like the B550 Tai, tai Chi has the PCIe switches. It just doesn't have that SLI license. So anyway, so I needed an SLI motherboard. I wanted a B550 because B550 gives you better overclocking in terms of BCLK. And then I wanted good memory overclocking. And so I ended up with this thing because the logic basically went, it's a six layer PCB. It has SL it has an SLI license. It's got a B550 chipset. How bad could it possibly be? Well, um, two sticks of Samsung B die, single rank. So two by eight. Um, max frequency, 4533 with BCLK adjustment. Um, actually, that's not frequency, but max effective memory speed, 4533. With BCLK adjustment, you could kind of do 4570-ish. Kind of. Um, for comparison, a B550 Steel Legend from ASRock, which costs less than this board, and has more features when it comes to memory overclocking, does 4666. And that's before you start messing with the BCLK. So probably you could eke out 4700 plus out of that board if you spent enough time on it. But this right here, nah, this, this only does 4533. Um, and this has six layers, which is the real kicker, because the B550 Steel Legend, as far as I can tell, is a four-layer PCB. And admittedly, ASRock has done some freaking magic on that motherboard, because they somehow figured out how to bury all of the memory traces on a motherboard with only four layers. Meanwhile, Asus over here has six layers, and I can still see one entire memory channel on the top of it. Um, which is probably why this memory channel sucks so badly at memory overclocking, but, you know, like... Um, because basically all of the motherboards that I'm going to be comparing this against that are better are, do use shielded daisy chains. This isn't a shielded daisy chain. Like, well, it's partially shielded because you can't see the other channel. Like, the other memory channel is buried somewhere inside the board, but the, like, nearest one to the CPU socket, this one, that's on the top layer. Um, and this channel also sucks. Like, this is the channel that holds back the overall memory overclocking capabilities of the board. And it's like, well, it's probably because they didn't bother to, to bury it like everybody else does. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, 2x4533, Steel Legend does 4666. A proper six-layer board like a B550 AORS Master does 4800+. plus. A B550 Vision, also a six-layer board, 4800+. plus. Uh, you know, MSI, X570, Tomahawk, 4600+. plus. Um, actually, you can 4666, though with more difficulty than the ASRock board, uh, if I remember correctly. So, basically, what I expect a 6 layer motherboard to do is over 4600 on Samsung b die. This doesn't do over 4600 on Samsung b die. Um, and, like, as far as I'm concerned, that should be easy. It shouldn't be, like, super difficult. You should be able to do, like, 4600 
And then, you know, 4,800 I do consider an achievement. Samsung B-Die is hard to run. Going over 4,800 with Samsung B-Die, that, that's impressive. This can't get anywhere near 4,800, right? Like, this is... Yeah, so that's, that's the first issue, is 2x8 kind of sucks. Luckily, 2x8 doesn't really have a lot of practical applications, so that doesn't really matter that much. However, 4x8 and 2x16 are also bad, because of course they are, because it's like, you know, the, the, if, if your signal integrity is too bad to run one rank at 4533, well, it's also too bad to run two ranks at, uh, say, 3933. Um, so for 4x8 and 2x16, this, for me, tops out at 3866. Um, and, like, that CPU, and this is with a 5950X, that 5950X on a X57, on a B550 Master, does over 4000 in 4x8. On an X570 Master, it does over 4000 in 4x8. In, like, the B550 Steel Legend, in 4x8, it does 4000. Now, admittedly, on the B550 Steel Legend, that, you know, 4x8, 4000 configuration kind of uh, takes some effort to actually do, but no amount of effort makes this thing run 4000. Because I can't even get it over 3866. Um, so, this sucks. <laughs> Like, really badly. Like, literally outclocked by a motherboard with two less layers and a much lower price point um, when it comes to the memory overclocking. So that's basically... That's basically it. And then the same thing goes for 2x16. Literally the, the same. Like, Ryzen's kind of... I think with with B, with Samsung B-Die, I think the ranks of B-Die are actually far more important than where those ranks are physically located, because on both 2x16 and 4x8, I basically hit the exact same frequencies, or like on, on daisy chain topology motherboards, so yeah, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but that's been my experience so far, so on this board, and, and with this board, yeah, it just kind of <laughs> doesn't hit the same frequencies that the other boards do, so so yeah, this this board is 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 really great at memory overclocking. But that's just sort of the frequency side of things. If we talk about the voltage controls, it gets worse. Yes, because it can get worse. Because this is a Strix board. It's a homeopathic ROG board. So you can't have full voltage control for your memory sticks. So the memory voltage on this is limited to 1.8 volts which is plenty high enough to require max mem and kill, like, some memory chips out there. Um, not B-Die, B-Die wouldn't care, but there are some memory chips that if you shove 1.8 volts into them, they're not going to last very long. Um, and, because, like, the, DD, the official spec for DDR4 is that they only have to survive up to 1.5, um, and that's survive, not operate at 1.5, so... Yeah, not to be mistaken with, but there's a lot of memory chips that tolerate tons of voltage. But either way, this board only goes up to 1.8 volts. For comparison, the Steel Legend goes over 2 volts. The B550 Master goes up to 2 volts. The MSI boards go up to 2 volts. Like, basically any... I think even my A520 gigabyte motherboard goes up to 2 volts. That's an A520 motherboard with no VRM heatsink on, like, the main VRM because the heat VRM heatsink costs too much. It still has more memory voltage range than this does. Um, and so the memory voltage is kind of limited, but ultimately I, I didn't even care about that because if I'm running SLI setups, like, we don't need 1.8 volts. I just need, like, 1.65, you know? So I wanted, like, strong memory overclocking at, like, di all, like medium to medium overclock voltages, right? Not like, like I didn't need some kind of, like I didn't need two volts. I didn't expect two volts. I didn't need two volts. I already knew from the get-go that this being a Strix board, I was not going to get two volts of memory voltage without physically modifying it myself to do so. However, <laughs> oh, and this is another thing that I knew ahead of time, but it's just really freaking annoying. This motherboard doesn't have proper VTT DDR control. You can only raise the VTT DDR voltage. You cannot lower it. Which is stupid, because there is never... I have never, ever had a situation where raising the VTT DDR voltage did anything other than make the stability worse, or nothing. Okay? So, basically... Um, and for comparison, 
that A520 gigabyte board has VTT DDR control, and that board costs like a fourth of what this does. Um, that's like a 60, uh, by that I'm referring to the A520MH, just like the cheapest A520 motherboard that Gigabyte makes. Yeah, that has better VTT DDR control than this does. And this is a 200 pound board. Admittedly on sale, if it wasn't on sale, it'd be 260 pounds, which makes it worse. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so this doesn't have proper VTT DDR control. It doesn't have proper VDIM range. Incidentally, the ASRock board, of course, it's an ASRock board. It's got VTT DDR control because ASRock isn't Asus. So they don't like nickel and dime you on features because basically, as far as I can tell, the idea behind Asus, like, shaving 200 millivolts off of their memory voltage and disabling half of the VTT DDR voltage range is Asus's way of telling you to buy a proper ROG motherboard that costs twice as much as this does. Um, to which I say, but I want a B550 chipset, damn it, so I'm not paying that. <laughs> but anyway, um, and by that I'm referring to the X570 Dark Hero, if you didn't get it, or like, yeah. Or a regular X570 Hero. Though I have a sneaking suspicion that the Dark Hero uses exactly the same memory topology because it has the same memory QVL that this does. So I guess it's probably a good thing that I bought this instead of the Dark Hero. Because if the Dark Hero clocks memory anything like this does, I would have been very upset. Because I would have spent twice as much money on my disappointment instead of just 200 quid. But... Yeah, anyway, so basically memory overclocking wise, you know, I wanted good memory overclocking. I got literally worse than a cheap ASRock motherboard. And if you want to know how cheap, we're actually going to take a look at that right now. So here is the B550 Strix uh, XE. Here's what like the uh, MSRP is from Asus. So it's 260 quid for this thing. Um, now, if we go over to PC Part Picker for the United Kingdom, uh, we can see that, you know, I could have a good motherboard for 222 quid right there. The Strix XE has been on sale for, like, months now, I guess because it sucks and nobody wants to buy it. Um, then we have the Vision DP, which is probably, like, I've not finished testing that board yet, but that is very likely to become my all-time favorite B550 motherboard, except for the part where it only has four SATA ports, but... Yeah, if you can, like, for benching, I don't care. Oh, and it also doesn't have SLI. That's, like, if that had freaking SLI, I would never have bought the stupid XE. But anyway, um, yeah, that's 200 quid. <laughs> then we have the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming Velocita, which is basically a fancy version of the B550 Steel Legend. That's under 200 quid. Now, where is the Steel Legend? Oh, look, it's the B550 Steel Legend, which absolutely dunks on the Strix XE when it comes to memory overclocking, and that costs 165 quid. And I'm pretty sure it's not even on sale. We're, we're, we're gonna find out. Is it on sale? And it doesn't look like it's on sale to me. So, um... Uh, yeah, that's that's great. That's, that's really great, Asus. Like, this board... Like if it was at, at, if it wasn't on sale right now, it would be like a hundred quid more than a B550 Steel Legend, while being significantly worse at memory overclocking. Like also having less memory overclocking features. Um, and now, admittedly, the B550 Steel Legend doesn't have an SLI license, but you know the SLI thing is like the only card that supports SLI currently is a 3090. So. I'd say most people probably don't care about that part and would be far more interested in the memory overclocking aspect of things. Also, this postcode is actually... So the B550 Steel Legend, what's cool about that board, and until I bought this, I, I didn't consider the B550 Steel Legend a really, like, a great B550 overclocking board because while it had a postcode, the fact that it only had four PCB layers meant that the memory overclocking, while significantly better than this, was worse than the, like, gigabyte boards I was testing original, like, the all the gigabyte boards I'd tested. And so I figured, eh, you know, it's a four-layer PCB. I assume, like, a six-layer Asus board does a better job. I was very wrong about that. Don't assume that six-layer Asus boards can outclock four-layer ASRock boards. <laughs> that sounds so, like, that doesn't sound like it should be true, but it's true. Like, I've Literally what I did with this board, I had the 5950X in it, 4x8 of B die, couldn't get 4000. Took those, like, took, took the sticks out of this board and the CPU, put them in the Steel Legend, 
and booted 4,000. Now, on the Steel Legend, it does take a bit of effort to get 4,000 to work, but on this, it never works. I've never gotten this to boot 4,000 on 4x8 or 2x16. Um, and on the Steel Legend, at least one of those configurations definitely works, because I've done it. Um, I didn't bother with the 2x16 configuration on the Steel Legend, which, if anything, should work even better, because that daisy chain on the Steel Legend seems a bit more sensitive. Um, just judging by the gap between the 4x8 and the 2x8 configuration on it. Um, but I don't know, I never tested that, so, you know, maybe 2x16 would have worked exactly the same as 4x8, but either way, it doesn't matter, because the, the Steel Legend just outclocks on 2x8, outclocks on 4x8, and, and costs less, has a postcode, has it in a better location. Like, I'm not a fan of postcodes on the bottom edge, but Asus actually just shoved it under a PCIe slot. Like, you know, I complain about it when it's over here, because if you have a long GPU, it might get covered up. You don't even need a long GPU, you just need a GPU. <laughs> okay, it's not quite that bad, but this is, like, this is a terrible location for a postcode. Um, so, yeah, that's basically my main thoughts on the B550 Strix XE. It's fine for daily, I guess. If you're gonna just run, like, 3800CL14, it'll do that, but... If you're just going to run 3800CL14, buy a Steel Legend, save 40 quid, buy yourself a better cooler, buy yourself a better, like, a better SSD or a better graphics card, you know, a graphics card with a bigger heatsink or, or, like, a better memory kit. Like, there's so many things you could spend that money on that aren't this board. Or you could just buy an equivalently priced gigabyte board, which would also be a better option. Um, anyway, let's take this stupid thing apart. Because now, I want to complain, uh, actually, we're not going to complain about the VRM, because the VRM on this is actually really, really good. Which is a real shame. Because, like, we have all of this VRM attached to this extremely mediocre memory section. Um, actually, I'm not even sure I would consider it media. Well, no, the Biostar motherboard clocks RAM worse. You know, the four-layer MATX Biostar board that needed, like, a power bridge so that the power plane wouldn't try to, like desalt like delaminate itself from the board um yeah that does clock memory worse than this does so i guess asus has that going for them i never got that board above 4600 even on micron memory chips or actually i think it did like 4666 on micron i can't remember it was really bad um so yeah that's worse than this um but you know like it's a four layer biostar board so I don't really think, like, if I'm comparing your motherboard to a four-layer Biostar... Oh, come on, this screw. Um, then, uh, that's, that's not great. <laughs> it's not something you want me comparing against. There we go. So there's the VRM. It's actually a really, really nice VRM. These are 90 amp, uh, pa smart power stages from Texas Instruments in there. Um, and if I remember correctly... Actually, I don't remember, so I'm gonna have to check... Yeah, so we've got the ASP1405 voltage controller, so that's the um, IR35201 from International Rectifier. I believe this is a 7-phase. Got 1, 2, 3, 4... Wait, really? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so we've got a... 7 plus 2, uh, actually, no, it's going to be a 7 plus 1 phase VRM with a single phase SOC and a 7 phase V core. The single phase SOC might actually be part of why the memory overclocking is so bad, but I'd be really surprised if that was the case. Like, it's, the, the SOC doesn't pull much current. You shouldn't need a two phase to power it, like, in terms of voltage regulation. You, you shouldn't necessarily need that. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, we've got a 7 plus 1 phase, parallel 90 amp power stages, so the current handling capacity of this is ridiculous. Like, in terms of current handling capability, this VRM is on par, actually it's better than what you can get on a B550A or S Master. It's just a real shame that the memory overclocking is so incredibly terrible. And also, Asus uh, has a cheater fan in the VRM heatsink. Um, so, yeah. That, that's there. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it... Well, okay, no. So, I'm not a... 
So I don't know how to feel about that. Like this is a nice VRM heatsink. It's got a lot of surface area, a lot of mass, right? Like I, I know it doesn't look like it has that much surface area, but it does actually have a lot of surface area. This this is a proper VRM heatsink. There's like as far as being a heatsink goes, this this is perfectly fine. Um, but that's the thing with the fan then is like so we have this mega overkill VRM with this perfectly you know functional heatsink design. And then they still shoved a VRM fan in it. And I'm just kind of like, are you really that desperate to be at the top of the VRM thermal comparison charts? Like, this is the thing with motherboard manufacturers, guys. Like, you know, why? Like, why? <laughs> like, it's not going to overheat. It's not going to run particularly hot either. And... Like, the only purpose I can see that fan serving is to make sure that it gets to the top of some kind of VRM thermal comparison chart, because, realistically, it doesn't need to be there. Um, and the unfortunate, like, the, the thing with VRM fans is, like, I, th I can't remember who was the first to do VRM fans, but basically it's now gotten to the point where, like, the EVGA Z590 Dark has two VRM fans for that monstrosity of a copper heatsink. And it's just like... Why? <laughs> like, stop putting fans on the high-end boards. These wouldn't overheat. Like, you could run a lot of these without the heatsink, and they still wouldn't overheat. And then... then and then you have the low-end boards, which, you know, don't actually get fixed anyway. <laughs> so, actually, no, low-end boards have improved a lot as well. So, yeah, that's kind of the thing. And then also, typical Asus fashion, we've got kind of a lot of input filtering, right? We've got, well, not that much. It's, it's just five capacitors, but, well, the funny thing is, like, top-of-the-line Gigabyte boards only have four input filtering capacitors. So, relative to, like, what Gigabyte likes to do, this is actually a lot of input filtering. Um... But yeah, for the output filtering, I think these are just regular, like, I don't think these are, yeah, no, these are 5,000 hours. I don't know who they're made by. Um, they've got, like, these are rebranded by Asus, so I have no idea who the manufacturer for these is, but they're 5,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. So they're not, like, super crazy high endurance or anything, they're just black. Because, you know, if you ask your, if you order enough capacitors, you can ask them to paint the capacitors for you. Whatever color you like, you could have them in pink if you order enough of them. Um, or at least I'm pretty sure you could get them in pink if you ordered enough of them. Uh, I'm not sure anybody's actually tried that, but like, you know, yeah. So anyway, so, you know, we've got really nice power stages, night, like a great VRM heatsink with a totally unnecessary fan, and then just an extremely disappointing memory section. And I guess I do have an SLI license. Like I still intend to... I'm still probably going to use this board because it does have that SLI license. And, like, I couldn't get SLI to work on the X570 Unify, and I'm not sure why. Um, so, hopefully this works. Like, if like that is the, still the one reason I haven't sold this board yet, is, like, if this has working SLI support, I can kind of forgive the ter well, I can't forgive the terrible memory section, but I can at least ignore it because <laughs> I don't have another motherboard with SLI. <laughs> you know, like that that's a real problem for me is like I, I li literally do not have a different motherboard to use if I want SLI support. So I guess I'll just kind of live with this thing if the SLI works like if the SLI is reliable, I'll just live with it. But yeah, um like, I, I can't believe that, like, this loses to a steel legend. Like, I wasn't expecting it to necessarily keep up with a B550 Aorus Master. Because very few boards keep up with the B550 Aorus Master, at least from my testing experience. I think MSI has a new memory topology that's coming out that might rival it. Uh, ASRock has a new daisy chain as well that I've still not had a chance to test on their six-layer boards. But... You know, I wasn't expecting it to be like, I'm comparing it to a 165 quid ASRock board. It's also losing to like uh, the B550M Aorus Pro AX, which is like a 160, 150 quid-ish board as well. 
that that also does 4600 so it does not losing that much to that board well for four by eight that board does over four thousand so you know for four by eight this thing is terrible um and it's also terrible for two by 16 in two by eight it's well, it just depends on how good a motherboard you compare it against, right? Um, that's kind of the issue, but... Yeah. Like... Why? Like, because here's the thing, like, the feature set on this board is... Like, this... this you ha Like, I have the postcode. It has the B550 chipset. It has a great VRM. And then... Why is the memory so bad? <laughs> like, so bad. Like, this this is acceptable for, like, a 3000 series board. For a 5000 series board, this, this, is, this is just bad. Because, like, on 3000 series, you legitimately can't push the Infinity Fabric high enough to to really care about the fact that, you know, you can't go over 3866. But, like, this board released after 5000 series, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure this released after the 5000 series did. Actually, it had to, because B550 didn't launch until the 5000 series did, didn't it? Something like that. So, yeah, like... Yeah, so, there. That's That's the incredibly disappointing motherboard. The... Asus B550 Strix XE. Now, admittedly, it's fine for daily. You know, yes, if you're building a daily system, you're not going to notice the fact that the motherboard just doesn't push crazy high memory frequencies on, well, any memory configuration. <laughs> There's just no memory configuration where this, this does a good job. Well, maybe if you only had one memory stick in the one memory channel that is actually shielded, which is this one, it might do a good job. I've not tested that. I know for a fact that in the 4x8 configuration, this channel is the problem. Like, this channel is what limits the board to 3866. So I assume in 2x8, this is also the channel that limits it to 4533. But... I don't really care, because running your CPU in single channel is literally deleting half your memory bandwidth. So it doesn't really matter how much clock speed you're losing for dual channel operation because dual channel is so much more important than the the memory speed that like it doesn't matter. You know? Um yeah. So I get like and, and if you're doing frequency validations, the B550 Unify X does a better job because there's less dim slots on that board. So yeah, very very disappointed in this one. Um, but hey, hopefully the SLI works properly. <laughs> it's the one redeeming, it's the one, one last hope for this board. And so like that, I have now made absolutely certain that Asus is not going to send samples anytime soon again. Um, yeah. Man, I'm still so frustrated. Because here's the thing is, like, I don't enjoy ripping on motherboards. I just want a good board. I want to be able to go to a store, buy a motherboard without having to do a shit ton of research that you can't even do because nobody tests the kind of memory overclocks that I actually want to run, right? Like, that's a big part of why AHOC only focuses on the things it focuses on is because I legitimately do not care that much about most daily stable settings. Like, all I want, like, you know, like, where would, like, I could have, I... Like, or actually, no, I do care about daily stable settings somewhat, but what I'm really interested when choosing some other boards, especially for overclocking, like I did with this one, like I wanted this as a test bench for SLI setups. Um, you know, it's like nobody tests crazy high memory speeds on 2x8 and 4x8 and that kind of thing. Um, and so, like, what was I supposed to do about that? Like, mo I'm with a most motherboard reviews, you're lucky if they figure out how to turn on the XMP. Actually, no, you, you ge generally do get, like, a basic XMP. Like, yeah, we turned on the XMP, it worked, it was great. Type deal. Um, <laughs> but, like, so, yeah, that, that's the thing, is, like, I, I complain about motherboards this much, because it's like, I want to be able to go to a store and buy a motherboard, and then not be immediately horribly disappointed when I go to do something like change the VTT DDR voltage in the useful direction 
Because, again, you can only raise it on this motherboard. You can't lower it, which is stupid. Um, and, uh, you know, and then when you want to run, you know, like, proper memory settings, you want them to actually freaking work, which they don't. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Um, there, that's it for the video. I'm actually going to end it now. <laughs> Uh, this went on way longer than it really needed to, so I guess sorry for wasting your time, but, uh, yeah, at least, at least now I don't have to sort of reference this board in, like, oh yeah, this other motherboard that I tested sucks. No, now it's just gonna be, like, compared to the B550 Strix XE, which sucks, incidentally, um, this motherboard's great! <laughs> That's the, This is my new measuring stick for how bad your memory overclocking can be. Previously, it was the original X570 motherboard, uh, X570 Gigabyte boards. Because um, actually, Gigabyte had a very similar memory topology on their early X570 boards. It behaved almost exactly like this does. Um, so the board that I currently have in my daily system. Again, this is perfectly fine for daily. It's horrible for a benchmark system. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm extending the video again. We should just end it. So, thank you for watching. Sorry for wasting your time. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, which includes things like purchasing horrible, very disappointing motherboards. Uh, Patreon, it helps out immensely with, with doing exactly that. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can purchase shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, and yeah, both Patreon and, and Teespring help out immensely with acquiring boards like this so that I can make videos where, where I complain about memory overclocking for roughly 36 minutes. So, yeah. Thanks to all my patrons for, for funding um, this. And uh, I'll hit the stop button now. Goodbye.